had anything as exciting as a snake bite in months. Snake bite? Yeah. You had a snake bite. Scared of snake? No. Scared of snake bite. And that snake bite almost took you out. Snake bite. We have lots of those around. That is not a snake bite. Huh? Ophidiophobia is an extreme, overwhelming fear of snakes. An estimated 33% of the world's population fears snakes, making it the second most prevalent phobia in the world, second only to a fear of spiders. About 30 species of poisonous snakes live in the United States, including 23 types of rattlesnakes. According to statistics, between 7,000 and 8,000 persons in the United States are bitten by venomous snakes each year with an average of five fatalities. Rattlesnakes are the most common cause of snake bite fatalities. With snakes occupying so many places inhabited by humans, the snake bite and fatality statistics are remarkably low. This can be attributed to advances in modern medicine and anti-venom treatment, as well as a healthy dose of fear and respect for the creatures among the general population. The adage holds true, if you don't bother them, they won't bother you. But what if I told you that nestled deep within the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, snake handling is common practice for an obscure religious sect of Pentecostal worshipers known as the Holiness Movement. Snake handling, speaking in tongues, and even drinking poison are just some of the sights to be seen on any given Sunday morning. Worshippers are encouraged to lay hands on the sick, speak in tongues, testify to miracles, and occasionally consume poisons, but the most bizarre act of serpent handling happens in front of the church, behind the pulpit. Commonly used snakes include rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, and copperheads, all venomous snakes native to North America. These snakes are usually captured from the local area by ranking members of the church. During the service, believers approach the front and pick up the snakes, usually raising them into the air and occasionally letting the snakes crawl on their bodies. With so many people willfully handling these dangerous wild animals, the occasional snake bite is a foregone certainty. A believer who is bitten usually does not seek medical attention but instead turns to God for healing. If they are bitten, the congregation prays for them. If they die, it is considered God's will that they do so. The practice of snake handling first appeared in American Christianity around 1910 and was associated with the ministry of George Went Hensley of Grasshopper Valley in southeastern Tennessee. Practitioners believe serpent handling dates to antiquity and quote the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, and the Gospel of Luke, chapter 100, to support the practice. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on the serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke, chapter 10, verse 19. Churches that practice snake handling and drinking poison as a demonstration of the strength of their faith during worship services frequently describe themselves with the phrase, with sign following. This is based on a literal interpretation of the following biblical passage, which they cite for biblical validation. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This literal interpretation of those verses has led to some very close calls and some very unfortunate premature deaths. Before we talk about the obvious downside of serpent handling, let's first take a look at the stars of the worship service. Up first, the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. The Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake is the largest rattlesnake species in North America and is one of the heaviest known species of venomous snakes in the world. While not usually aggressive, it is large and powerful. Adults are typically 4 to 5 feet long and weigh 4 to 5 pounds. A big snake may reach 6 feet in length and weigh 15 pounds or more. 
In proportion to its length, it has the longest fangs of any rattlesnake species. Next, we have the Timer Rattlesnake, also known as the Canebrake Rattlesnake. Like other members of the Pit Viper family, the Timber Rattlesnake has a large, heavy-bodied appearance. Adults typically reach lengths of two and a half to five feet, but there are reports of timber rattlesnakes growing up to seven feet long. Rattlesnake bites can cause severe pain and swelling at the site of the bite, as well as excessive bleeding, nausea, swelling in the mouth and throat, making breathing difficult, lightheadedness, drooling, and, in rare cases, collapse, shock, and death. Without proper medical treatment, the likelihood of severe tissue damage and fatality are increased beyond measure. As obvious as that may seem to members of the general public, the deep faith practiced by followers of this movement is powerful enough to obscure these extreme dangers. Because snake bites are rarely treated and public scrutiny prevents members from self-reporting, an accurate number of bites and deaths will never be known. There have been some notable deaths over the years. Glenn Summerford, a snake handling preacher, was convicted in 1992 of attempting to murder his wife with a rattlesnake by forcing her to be bitten twice at their home. During the trial, some congregation members supported Glenn Summerford while others supported his wife, Darlene. Each Summerford accused the other of infidelity and backsliding from their religious beliefs. Mac Randall Wolford, pastor of the Full Gospel Apostolic House of the Lord Jesus in Mataoka, West Virginia, died hours after being bitten by a rattlesnake on Sunday, May 28, 2012, the day after his 44th birthday. Wolford's father, a serpent-handling pastor himself, died in a similar manner nearly 30 years ago. On February 15, 2014, Pastor Jamie Coots was bitten on the right hand during a service at his full gospel tabernacle in Jesus' name church in Middlesboro, Kentucky. After the bite, he dropped the snakes but then continued to pick them up and continued the ceremony. Later, he was driven home. When paramedics arrived, his relatives refused medical treatment for him, saying it was inconsistent with his religion. He died in his home. He was succeeded as the head of the Full Gospel Tabernacle by his son, Cody. August 19, 2018, Pastor Cody Coots was bitten in the face by a rattlesnake during a service and was forced to receive treatment to save his life. Once bitten, Cody asked his congregation to take him to the mountaintop where God would judge whether he is to pull through or succumb to the same fate as his father. Instead of following the words of the pastor, one follower took him to the hospital, where doctors told the pastor he was lucky to be alive. The snake came close to severing the temporal artery, which would almost certainly have killed him. The obviously dangerous nature of snake handling churches has proven to be an offense to the common good, which has resulted in multiple arrests and the seizure of hundreds of snakes. The practice has prompted most states to pass laws regulating the handling and keeping of venomous snakes. In fact, there was only one left in the country that has not outlawed the practice of snake handling. The practice of snake handling during religious services in the United States of America is considered so dangerous that it has been outlawed. In a country where the right to practice one's religion freely is enshrined in the Constitution, serpent handling is not allowed and its practitioners face legal consequences. If you enjoyed this episode of Can't Be True, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any amazing but true stories you'd like to hear about, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.